Welcome to today's webinar on using the admin console, web restores, and the support portal for your Mozy Pro account. My name is Craig Cole. I'm the Senior Technical Education Specialist here at Mozy, and I'll be providing some instruction today. As part of my job, I train both the support technicians inside of our company but I also spend some time with customers and with partners um, traveling around and helping them to understand how to best use our tools. Today we're going to focus on the web tools that are available to you as an admin uh, at an administrator for a Mozy Pro account. Um, we're going to we're going to cover some slides uh, just to set some standard understanding, uh, some definitions, and and some things what tell you what we're going to be talking about. But then we're going to spend the majority of our time in a browser uh, performing some some basic uh, functions um, that uh, that normal admins do. Um, this is an ongoing. This is one in a series. We're going to be providing these webcasts on. Uh, the third Wednesday of every month uh, through the end of the year um, and uh, we post these at community.mozy.com in the support blog area. If you have any troubles finding it, uh, a little poking around in our website should, should uh, bear it out um, or you can provide feedback and I'll respond back with, um, with that location. Let's go ahead and um, get started here. Now keep in mind that our our primary goal as an administrator is to get things set up and uh, with Mozy Pro and let them run. Um, but it does require some planning and understanding how the tools work. So we're going to focus on that. So Mozy Pro is designed for business users, uh, not our home consumers, not people at home that are backing up, um, you know, uh, wedding photos or or tax documents. Um, this is designed for for professionals who need to make sure that any data that their users or their employees are working on are saved. The admin console allows you to manage the way that that. Uh, some of those tasks are performed. You can manage the way that users are assigned. You can manage the machines that are being backed up, including performing restores of data. We can also manage groups, um, uh, collecting groups of users. So we could have the sales group and the marketing group and the engineering group. And based on those three different groups, we can assign behaviors of their Mozy Pro client um, without them having to do anything. And then uh, managing uh, licenses and storage quotas, another function of the admin console. Now, this is not an exhaustive list um, of, of everything you can do with the, with the admin console. We don't have time to cover all of that today. However, we will be covering uh, core components, hopefully giving you a good idea of what to expect from our Mozy uh, Pro uh, admin console. So, uh, some basic definitions. You need to understand what what we're talking about. I'm going to use some words and perhaps a little bit differently than you're used to hearing them so uh, bear with me while we just go through this uh, exercise of explaining what we're talking about. Number one, uh, an administrator, an account administrator or the person to whom the Mosey Pro account is assigned or someone who's assigned or designated to manage either the account or specific functions of the account or even specific groups within an account. We also have what are called users. A user is someone that is designed to manage a machine that has the Mozy Pro client installed and running. Then we have resources. Resources are the licenses, storage quota, and the machines that are used by Mozy Pro. So when we talk about resources, we're talking about those things that you purchase and assign out um, as part of the Mozy Pro uh, configuration. So. So those, those are our core um, definitions. Let's log in to talk about logging in. Logging into the admin console is, is pretty straightforward. Um, the actual address is the first list on, uh, first one listed on this particular slide, uh, secure.mosey.com slash login. That's where it goes if you put in either of the other two addresses that I have listed here, either mosey.com slash login or moseypro.com slash login. They all go to the same place. And then when you put in your credentials, it sees which account you're tied to and goes ahead and logs you in 
Now, this interface is not designed for the regular end user. This is designed for administrators. This could be people that are in groups, uh, in, in charge of managing groups, or it could be users that are um, administrators that are in charge of dealing with license keys and purchases or otherwise someone who's just in charge of making sure that things run as, as expected. The login screen is pretty straightforward. You just uh, put in your email address and your password and click the login button and that's how you get into the account. Um, we're going to uh, be doing a demonstration. I'll be walking through some of these things in just a minute. And when you log in, this is the basic screen that you're, you're presented with. This is, again, just a, a login of someone who's just logged into the system um, to the admin console. Um, and we're going to be covering those things in just a minute. Uh, so, so again, what can the admin console do? The admin, admin console has a, a vast number of things that it can do. Uh, purchasing resources, the licenses, the storage quota. Can, you can create and manage groups. You can create and manage administrators, people who will be in charge of groups of people or machines. Um, transfer resources between groups. So if you purchase too many for your engineering team, you can transfer those over to the sales team if they need more licenses and so forth so that you can optimize the efficiency of the licenses you purchased. You can create reports of your backups and your usage, etc. And you can restore users' files uh, through this uh, um, interface as well, which allows you, again, someone's machine crashes, they get a new machine. By the time uh, they're ready to install or work with that new machine, you can have downloaded all those, uh, those files to your machine, copied them off to their new machine, and hand it to them, and it's all ready to go uh, on the new machine. So there are a great deal other functions. If you're interested in the docs.mosey.com area, of our website, there is a documentation uh, section specifically for administrators. Um, it's documentation that includes the admin console, uh, as well as several other uh, several other functions that admins tend to do or administrators tend to do. Um, and I would recommend you go there and and uh, and check some of those out. There's also a tutorials section of our support page. Uh, the support uh, the tutorials are video. Uh, tutorials. They're approximately five minutes long and they walk you through the use of um, various functions of the admin console and, and other things including uh, doing restores and, and different types of backups. All right, so we're going to do a demonstration. Uh, we're going to talk about users and groups and machines. We're going to talk about resources, simple management. This is not designed, again, to, to, to tell you everything about it, but just to give you an overall sense of what the tool can do so that you can get in and kind of explore and see what what uh, how you can maximize or, or make your use of the tool more efficient. We're then going to perform a web restore for you. I'm just going to show you uh, how to access the user's files, um, previewing files, and uh, and then directly downloading files um, via the different methods. There's a direct download or restore manager. There's also a, a, an archive, and there's even a um, an, an option to have files uh, packaged up and shipped to you on DVDs or or even a hard drive if you're restoring enough data. Um, and then there's the support portal uh, demonstration. Uh, this is a fairly key one because it tells you how to find help within our organization. Um, our goal is to educate you on how to use our tools efficiently. We have a great deal of information out in our knowledge base. We call that the KB. Um, uh, we, we're going to show you how to get help from the community by asking other people who are using the product um, and, and just uh, how to interact with support through that portal as well. So let's uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and uh, and just switch gears here. Um, I'm already in the admin console, as you can see. Um, I've logged into my test account. Uh, just to give you an idea of what it looks like. Now, first of all, you have your dashboard, which gives you just an overall sense of what's going on with your your backups. But um, it's a standard layout. On the left, we have navigation. Um, in the middle, we have these individual boxes, and each of these boxes have different functions. As an example, um, if I click on Users, it only displays the Users section, and the items that are highlighted in green on the left-hand side are the ones that are displayed in the middle section. 
So you can see what you have are open already. It'll be flagged. You can only have items from a specific category displayed, one specific category displayed at a time. In other words, you can't have this search list users open and then also be editing the client configuration. All right. So the, the not, not a big thing, but wanted to point it out. You can also refresh any, um, any returned results if you're trying to see if someone's backed up over time or is backing up. You can click this to refresh it. And also, when you perform a search, if you have a large list of users or a lot of data that it's searching through, this little triangle up here in the corner, you can click on it to minimize. But also, when you're searching, it has a little hexagon that sits there and spins. And that's the only indication you'll receive that it's performing any function, because each of these boxes is a separate function or has a separate function. OK, I'm going to do just a simple search, um, not for users. I'm going to search for a laptop. I have one that's called SLC2 Train 15. This happens to be um, the machine that I'm doing this demonstration on, and it's got some inf interesting information on it. Um, I know how much, uh, I know what the username, who it's assigned to, that's an email address generally, a user group, um, a storage uh, statement, so how much have they used and how much are they allotted, when it was created, last time they attempted to back up, and even a little more uh, a deeper summary on, on that uh, one point. If you click on the machine item, it opens up a separate window down below. Now, see, I just clicked here, and it just scrolled down the page and opened up a new window. And in this window, we can see, again, a little bit more information about it, including things like the client version, the type of key being used, and the key na name. It's a server license. And we can see the history of this particular machine. So we can see when it was backed up successfully, if there are errors under success, under result, excuse me, where, where it says success, instead it would say, it would give you the error code. And then you could go and track down exactly what that error is. So that gives you some uh, ability to do some management of, the, uh, uh, of your machines here. Now, um, so that's searching for users, searching for machines. You can also search for users. You'll notice up here, if I wanted to, I could, I could do a search for that user. And notice that it's the same as this. It's just I'm coming at it from the user angle instead of the machine angle. If I click on the user, it again opens a new box down at the bottom. See, this is opened up. And it has the computers that are assigned to me and a little better understanding what's going on. Now, there's a couple other things we can do with this. Um, this is just, again, an overview of some general functions that you can use inside of the admin console. Um, we can add new users from here. We can uh, work with what are called groups. Now, groups are quite important because, again, if you have any more than, say, five or ten users, you might want to split them up and uh, uh, allow for management differently, especially if they have different needs as far as their backup. Let's say you have an in-house graphic design team, and then you have a team that, that just does some uh, some word, uh, uh, word document type creation. So that's all they do. So the, the graphic artist team is probably going to create a lot more uh, volume of files that need to be backed up, uh, pictures and videos perhaps, maybe some PowerPoints and things like that. And you might want to make sure that they are um, given enough space. And so you set different rules for that group, and then everyone in that group inherits those. And then for the other team, let's say it's just your your uh, secretary, your your receptionists, and and your um, executive assistants, and they're in a separate group, and they deal with smaller documents, a lot of smaller documents, so they don't need quite as much space. So you can set limits based on generally what they need, and then change those for the individual as you need to. But set kind of a general rule. So groups are nice again because they allow for ease of administration. You can make changes to the entire group if you want to. Um, so, so that's uh, that's our user section. Now, under user, there's also the the machines. Now, I did demonstrate this, but we can see inside of machines. I'm going to go ahead and just clear this search, 
and do another search just to show all of them. And I can see just overall um, who's been backed up, when the last time they backed up was, uh, how much space they've backed up, and, and so on. This gives you, again, an overview of, of some of the items in here. Now, I have a whole lot of users in this section, so we could go over to, let's say, our... Um, as far down as we want, but the easiest way to search would be, instead of manually going through, would be to do a search based on the name of the computer, if you know it. Okay, so that's machines. So we looked at users, we looked at groups. Let's look at administrators for just a minute, and then we're going to switch gears and go over and look at performing a web restore for a client, or for a customer, um, or for a user depending on who who's doing the backup so let's look at the administrator so I'm just going to click on the admin section and it's going to open up notice we've got one box open we have some others here but they're not really opened up so we can look at the different administrators that are in here notice we have some rather interesting ones like Bob the Builder okay so obviously not I don't we don't really have someone named Bob the Builder here but we can create an admin and use that admin um, give them rights to go and, and administer the different groups that we've created. Administrative roles can be manipulated down in the list roles section. Actually, um, you can go into the role itself. So let's say as an example, we wanted to go into training test. We could come in here and manipulate what uh, av available options. You'll notice that this training test one doesn't have the rights to purchase resources. So um, you don't give them the ability to purchase or to buy additional space. They may just be assigned to help with web restores or other functions. Okay, So that's administration uh, or the admins just in a nutshell shell of what they can do and so on. Uh, so that's uh, admins. Now we can list and, and make manipulations to it. Another thing we can do, though, is we can also deal with what's called resources. Now resources, again, license keys and storage quota, and they're assigned to machines. We can come in here and purchase new keys through this. Many of you have probably already dealt with this, but we would have to assign a group. So we'd select... Uh, there we've gone ahead and found a group called unwashed, and we can give one uh, server key, one desktop key, and we're going to give 20 gigs here and 20 gigs here. And then we could click Submit and go through the process of putting in our credit card, in card information and being charged for those, uh, those changes. Now, so that's uh, one of the things that resource management is purchasing, but there's more to it. We might also need to transfer um, some of these things. So I'm going to close out some of these things. Um, as an example, I'm going to go specifically to the transfer resources. If, for instance, we want to transfer licenses from one group to another, we select the source group, we select the target group, let's say I want to move it to the um, to this particular group, we put how many licenses we want to transfer, we select how many gigabytes of storage we want to transfer, and we click continue, and if we have desktop licenses it will allow us to transfer and server license but since we don't it pops up with an error you don't have enough to transfer so we're going to go ahead and clear these out no server transfer okay so we don't have any storage so we're just going to transfer licenses how's that there you go and here it says resources transferred from one group to the other pretty simple all right so Managing resources, assigning keys, these are all things we can do um, as we need to. Uh, but we do need to have uh, some understanding of how it works. And, and playing with it, watching those video tutorials, or going to our documentation site and reading up on it is a good way to educate yourself on how these things work. Um, we can also assign keys by going to and putting a username and password right here. Or not a username, excuse me, an email address right here. And that email address would be assigned out. Uh, that and you can send that email to them an email to them that includes the key you've probably seen that before all right I'm gonna go ahead and switch gears now we're gonna go back over to users we're gonna do a search for that machine that I was uh, talking about and just talk about uh, doing restores so just as a quick summary the admin console has a great number of functions the functions are built around 
making sure that that you are efficiently using uh, the, the tools or the items that you've purchased and making sure that users get the support they need. Um, it also is an interface uh, for when disasters happen or when, when a hard drive crashes or, a, or a, a, an office floods or something like that. You can get your data back by coming here, logging into the admin console, going to the machine, finding the machine you want to restore, clicking on the machine, and right up here in the corner it says Restore Files. We're going to click that. It's going to open a new window and it opens our web restore interface. Now I want to point out a couple of things. Number one, you can specify a time or a date uh, in the past that you wanted to grab files from. Let's say you wanted to grab a specific version of a file um, from two weeks ago. So you go to the day, day before it last backed up, you select that date, go back there, and then you can grab um, that particular file. Now that's kind of nice. Um, so you can get a specific version. Let's follow the simple process of restoring a file. So we click on browse. We're just going to browse down to a specific location. Now obviously I prepared this a little bit ahead of time. Um, and uh, so you just click on the, uh, the items you want and it browses down to the folder you want. Whoops, just a second. My bad. There we go. Okay, so we're going to the April 20th folder. This happens to have a bunch of pictures. Now, these are pictures that, um, that I know well. This is a, a picture of my daughter. Now, notice that it went and grabbed a quick preview of that file. So that's going to our back end, pulling it off one of our secure servers, and um, putting it in front of you so that you can see which file it is. If you want to download it, you can do one of two things. You can either double-click the file, or you can just click this download down arrow that has a label of download now. We can see when the file was, uh, what the date is on that file. We can also go and look to see if there are different versions. So if there are multiple versions of a file that we have uh, backed up, we can extend, we can expand this and find that particular file we want. Now, in my case, I'm just going to click the download button, and here it goes. It pops up and gives me the option to save the file. Okay, I'm not going to save it. I happen to have a couple of copies of this one. Plus, I have the original. That'd be the little girl. Um, but if uh, I want to, so if you're downloading just one file at a time, you just go, or one file or a couple of files, you just go and double click them and download them. Let's say you're downloading a few files, though. Let's say we're going to download, say, four files. We click all the files we want. Okay. We select them. Now, notice when they're selected with the check mark that they show up in the Restore Summary section down at the bottom. This means that these are the files down at the bottom that are included in the backup. So once you've selected all the ones you want, you click the Submit button, and it pops up with this little um, notification. This is telling you, number one, uh, how many files are being restored, how big they are, or the, the total is, you can give it a name. Now this becomes important if you start inter interacting with our w restore manager because then you can see the name of the restore. Let's say demonstration download. Okay, And we can click direct download. Now the direct download will pop up and ask you to use our download manager. The download manager is a simple utility that com communicates with our back end and streams the files down to your computer one at a time as, as it uh, um, has the availability. So just goes ahead and goes and makes a request for the file and then downloads them. I've used this method to download 55 gigs worth of data before and it worked just fine for me. I left it running overnight. 55 gigs is a huge amount of data if you think about it. But it downloaded that overnight and was, was great. I had that those files restored. Now I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this and I'm going to browse back down here. I'm going to select those files again and I'm going to click the submit button again just like I did before. But this time uh, I'm going to point out there's a couple other options here. Um, we can do the same thing. We can name it but there's also this item here it's called archive package. Now the archive package 
uh, conforms more to the more to the old way that we provided web restores, which allowed you to do a um, a, a zipped or compressed file, um, depending on the platform you're on. So you could download a grouping of files. Let's say you had 5,000 files. You'd select the files you wanted in a folder or whatever, and then submit this. And then it, our server goes, gets those files, creates a zip file or an archive package for you, and allows you to download them. The other option is to perform what's called a media restore. The media restore is uh, we will send you basically DVDs that will allow you to to restore your data. Now, why would why would someone choose this? The, the, some people want to restore it in a location where their internet is unreliable, where they've had some trouble getting it, um, and this is an option. There is a fee associated with this, um, and the more data you restore, uh, the larger the fee gets, but it gets uh, less expensive um, as you um, restore more files uh, per file. Okay, so um, so those are the two methods, or the the three methods uh, methods of doing a restore. This is something that not a lot of people use. They assume that in order to do a restore, they have to have the Mosey client installed. Let me point out, the Mosey client is the best at doing the restores, so it should be the first option. This is an alternative if you want to do a restore and need to get access to your files. Um, you can use this uh, as an interface for going and getting your pictures or whatever. Uh, I used this interface actually yesterday. I was at my parents' house and I shared with them some of the photos, some of the pictures that I had of the kids. So that um, it has utility there to, to share data with people as well, and, and you'll hear that as a theme uh, with coming this year. So let's, uh, let's close that. That's the web restore interface. Web restore interface, if you don't have the client installed on the machine, you can still go and get data from a particular machine if it's died or unavailable, um, etc. So let's close that. There is one other item that I wanted to do. Uh, I wanted to show you... Um, Actually, I'm going to log out here. I, I wanted to show you our um, support portal, which is found at support.mosey.com. Support.mosey.com is a um, it's a catching place for for answers. This is where we solve a lot of our problems. We help customers find answers and help them get educated on how this whole system works, how Mosey Pro works, how to uh, administer things, how to use the client, and so on. You'll notice um, the, the things that I'm most interested in are these items in this particular bar right here. We have the uh, community, the knowledge base, the documentation section, and the tutorial section. The community and the knowledge base are really good resources for finding answers. Um, but I want to point out just a quick way of searching them. If you click on knowledge base and then do a search from inside here, such as using the admin console, you'll find a couple of options. When it returns items, it gives you a solution, an FAQ, an error messages, a documentation, and even a tutorial section on finding information about this particular search term that you put in here. Um, the solution section is designed around giving you answers to specific problems you may be having. In other words, a solution will be phrased as, uh, when I back up, um, it gives me an account error 3. And the solution would be, the solution would be something like an account error 3 indicates that you do not have an appropriate or enough quota in order to back up. You don't have enough space purchased or assigned to that machine. An FAQ, on the other hand, would be how do I give or assign new quota to a machine? And so you could follow the FAQ section and it would answer that as part of that FAQ. You then have error messages documentation and tutorials. Now tutorials again are um, interesting because they're video instructions on how things work. I would again highly recommend that you spend some time in the tutorial section uh, becoming familiar with those tools and how that whole thing works. 
There is also the documentation section. I want to point out in the documentation section there's a Mosi Pro Administrator piece. The Mosi Pro Administrator piece is very good at explaining how um, to manage your account. Um, I would recommend that you click on that and use the different items there um, frequently. Then of course there's the tutorial section. I've clicked on it. Inside the tutorials you have different sections and you'll notice this one. I wanted to bring attention to this one. There's a webinar section. This session that you're watching will be found here and all future um, webinars will be stored here as well so that you can go back and use them uh, to refresh your, your memory on how things work or to answer some, ben uh, some basic questions. Going forward you will find that these webinars will have a question and ans answer uh, period. We're going to be uh, starting that in the March of 2012. Uh, session of the webinar so you can look for those um, and you'll be able to interact with uh, with me uh, I'll be the primary person providing these webinars and uh, and we'll make sure that, uh, that to get as many answers as you can we want our customers to be happy we want you to be informed and uh, we, we appreciate your time and your business alright let's just finish up by referring back to our slide deck for just a minute um, just keep in mind that the, the that when we covered the admin console, um, realize that it can be used to make your use of the admin, of, of the Mosi Pro suite of tools um, very efficient. Um, we can use the admin console as a way to start a restore of data. We can manage user accounts. We can manipulate things so that we get the most for our money. We also uh, wanted, to, I just want to point out the importance of using the support portal uh, where you can get help and answers to Mosey Pro questions. Um, there is a way in there on the left hand side that you can create and open cases. If you click the login buttons when at support.mosey.com, you can interact with our support team through a chat interface if, that, if you prefer, if you're not in a situation where you can talk on the phone. Um, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, our next webinar will be held on the 21st of March. You can check at community.mosey.com for announcements and so forth of, uh, of what the topics will be um, for the upcoming uh, webcasts or webinars. Thanks again and have a great day.